All right, so what we want to do now is look at the next uh, or the last handout that I've got for us. So from the network folder, you should have copied earlier today the SEO number three backlinks. So we looked at the client marketing strategy and now we'll look at item three backlinks. Go ahead and open that PDF. You can print that out a little bit later. But let's look at uh, what I've got here regarding backlinks. All right, so this uh, document is in two pages in various sections. And we want to talk about, first of all, the book. There's the book again. It's in the syllabus, but there's the book. And you can go check it out online. And then I've got finding your backlinks section, organizing your backlinks, taking advantage of your backlinks, and bad backlinks. So we're, we'll look through all of these together. Basically, the concept is, okay, last week, if you were able to, we set up Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics. If you were able to do that, perhaps it has collected some data by now. Perhaps not. There's going to be an uphill climb in the beginning about, I have a brand new website, I have no traffic to it. It's been weeks and months, and I have very little traffic to it. Well, again, if you've just got the website, that's not the only thing you need. You need the social media and such. And so, if you did set this up, we're going to log into we're going to log into these, and we will see that there. These are the screens you want to go into to see the data. I'm going to kind of do it the same way as previously, where I'll log in out and we'll look at Bing, then Webmaster Tools, also known as Search Console, and then Analytics, because Analytics is the big one with so much data. Well, after we kind of get acclimated and see what we've got, what do we do with it? I've got a little section about organizing it, basically downloading the data. And then furthermore, what to, what to tangibly do with the data, some things there. And then, well, we've discovered I've got bad backlinks. I didn't know I've got this traffic coming to my site from these weird websites throughout the world. What do I do about it? That's disavow. So what we'll do first is we need to log back into your Bing Webmaster Tools. It's not listed in this document, but you should remember that the way to get back to the Bing Webmaster Tools, go ahead and open your browser, and then we'll go to the website bing.com slash toolbox. Let's go to the web, bing.com slash toolbox. Take a moment to sign in just like we did previously. If you never were able to set this up previously, that's okay. Then I'll just go on and show what this is all about. Bing.com slash toolbox. Sign in. All right, so previously, we, the thing that we really only managed to do last time was to set up the account. And it's only been a week, so perhaps you don't have much to show for it, but I'll show you some examples here then of, um, of what you will get. Uh, this is the one, this is the account that I use for my various clients. And um, so it's just a list of the different clients. And the way, the way that we look at the screen is we've got these various columns, messages, clicks from search, appeared in search pages, crawled pages, indexed. 
if Bing finds any problems with your site, you'll get some sort of notification here under the messages, such as you know the server's down or there's spyware and so forth. So problems with your site, you will get a notification. Then we have clicks from search and appeared in search. These two really go hand in hand. Now I do have to ask though because I, again I teach a lot of classes and unfortunately sometimes they meld together. You remind me, have I explained what these columns are yet in this class? No? Okay. So as I was saying we've got clicks from search, appeared in search. Now all of these numbers are going to be either green for increasing, red for decreasing, blue for the same. And so you might think, I always want green values. <coughs> And in short, yes, but you're not always able to achieve green values, and I'll explain why. If you get red values, it might not be so bad. So this particular client, clicks from search, appeared in search. Clicks from search has more value than appeared from search. These are impressions, and these are conversions. We've mentioned those words before, haven't we? Impressions, conversions. Impressions are that this website has appeared in front of people when they search. They've been impressed by it. They've seen it. Impressions. But okay, it's nice that someone saw them, saw this client on a, on a page full of Bing results, because these are all results from Bing. It's nice that from the previous time period, last month, this client was seen 38 more times on Bing. That's nice. But what's nicer is that there have been more clicks than the previous time period. So clicks from search has perhaps a little more value meaning actual conversions, actual clicks to the website. That's not the whole picture, of course, because just going to the website doesn't mean much. Did they read that article? Did they, did they donate? Did they subscribe to the newsletter? That can be answered later. But once you set this up and it starts gathering data, you will be able to then see these time periods. Here's what happened in the last 30 days. And if I've only got this set up for one week, I might not have much to look at or data to make good decisions on. Uh, pages crawled, pages indexed. Okay, here one is increasing, one is neutral. Well, the pages crawled means that the Bing spider, the Bing search bot, went to the website and jumped around to the different pages of the website. It crawled the website. It looked around on the website a little bit more than last time, last month. Pages indexed is then what those are the pages that were discovered and added to the Bing database. Google has one, Bing has one, Yahoo, they've all got a database of all the websites. And that's their index. Bing did not add any new pages to this client's database record on the search engine. It didn't find anything new to add to the database, therefore that's zero. These numbers, there's some green and there's some blue on this client. Again, is that good or bad? You make better decisions when you have longer amounts of time to actually make a decision. This is sort of like the stock market. If you look at a snapshot of the stock market in one day and suddenly all my investments lost money, then I hate the stock market. But if I look at the stock market in a week, in a month, in a year, in five years, and in those five years my investments went up 20%, I love the stock market. Same thing here with your data. Three months is a little bit better information or a better time horizon to tell me how, how this client is doing. In three months, this client appeared a quarter more times on Bing search in the previous three months and was clicked 73% more times. And we'll see the exact numbers on another screen here. But percentage-wise, this client in the last three months seems to be doing well on Bing. There is a big old negative number right there, but I'm not worried about it because this particular client really hasn't added anything new to the site in three months, so therefore the search engine didn't find anything new to add to the index. It saw less content, basically, but that's fine. It, it wasn't detrimental to more clicks. So the longer you have this up, set up, the better. Let's see this one. Okay, in three months, this doesn't look so good for this particular client. Less views on Bing and less clicks. Uh, a little bit more content on the site, the menu was changed and such, but a little bit less traffic. 
to the website. That could be a cause for concern. D digging into the data deeper, and there is a lot of data, I could then make decisions. I could then decide, okay, the reason we're not getting that much traffic is I discovered there's a bunch of broken links. The search engines look at that. The search engines look at your broken links. And this helps me discover, I've got broken links. Let me fix those. The search engines might be seeing, there's a bunch of weird, irrelevant websites linking to this website. That could be dragging down the rankings as well. This will tell us the backlinks. This will tell us all the websites, positive or negative, to make decisions. That's the whole point of Bing, Toolbox, Google Analytics, all of this stuff. Look at this. In the past three months, our company website has appeared more times on search and 450 times more clicks. I can see the hard numbers to see exactly how many of those are. But all of this is to build your knowledge, and knowledge is power. So don't be concerned if you see negative numbers. Why we see them, we'll see as we go deeper. So let's say on one particular client, I actually click on your website. You click, then you will see the detail. You will actually see the numbers, not just percentages, but real numbers. Mine's a bit slow, so it should open up soon. Okay, so actually looking at the data, I see that this percentage meant nine clicks rather than six. So I'm seeing that the site is appearing this number of times and this number of clicks. That sounds really good, but that meant, you know, 9 instead of 6. So the actual number's there. This is just traffic that you're getting from Bing. When we get over to Google, it'll probably be double or triple more. Because Google is the bigger search engine. It stands to reason. Um, what could be valuable is within this... Uh, section here of search keywords. I could go in there, see what are all of the keywords that people are searching for that I didn't think about, and then based on those keywords, create content. So again, you might not see anything on any of these just yet because it's so new, perhaps. But here I can go look at, the, at all the keywords that it says that people are using to find the site. And then maybe I could further use those keywords in blog posts or tweets or Instagram pictures and so forth. And of course, when we want to look at it, it doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, so there's a lot of different screens to look at. We're not going to look at most of them. Uh, you can explore this stuff on your own. There's a help at the top right corner, but what I want to focus on, according to my handout here, um, in, here's how in Bing Webmaster to find out what are my inbound links. I want to see who's linking to my site. So basically you need to log into Bing Toolbox, click on your site, the dashboard, and then go to Reports and Data, inbound links. They call it inbound links here instead of incoming or backlinks or whatever. So on the left there's the dashboard, reports and data, inbound links. I click on inbound links. It'll show me over this amount of time how many links Bing has found. And then specifically it shows me these are the pages that have links to them. The home page and the dinner menu seem to be the top ones. 
and to actually see what are the pages, what are the links, the backlinks, I can click on the left or the right, it doesn't matter, the actual number or the name of the page. But let's say I click. That'll open up to show me, okay, the source on the left and the anchor text. The source is what is the website, and the anchor text is what was the text written on their page that was an active link that brought me to my page. So we've got San Diego Reader news, uh, an article from January 4th, Stringer's Parking 3rd Avenue, and it's got a list over to the client's dinner menu. Okay, well, I can actually click to go look at the original article, the original link. So right here, the San Diego Reader. This is not solicited. This was not bought by the client. This client actually engages in very little online marketing. The food really speaks for them and they have really great um, they have a lot of um, great food and reviews and such. So Someone here wrote Susan Lazaro. I wonder if that's the Susan Lazaro, but wrote here um, in a in the comment to the article. The article itself doesn't mention the client, but the comment. Someone added a comment. They're talking about here about how you know there aren't any good destinations on on Third Avenue. Well, there are, and, the, and this person gives gives an unsolicited endorsement of this client, of their restaurant. So right there, there's an intimate trattoria italianissimo and a great little theater, which puts on an interesting mix of traditional and cutting-edge plays. And then someone else seconded that. Someone else said, yeah, italianissimo is great. So that's a backlink. That's, that's an article coming from a reputable uh, online location linking over to the client, getting some traffic. There's another blogger over here, Mayugo. This particular blogger wrote about the um, the restaurant, and then there's a link. It doesn't have to be big, famous links all the time. This is a person that is trying to build an online reputation as a blogger, uh, traveler, blogger, etc., foodie. That's a valuable link. I never have heard of this person, but it's a valuable link because she must have some readership and then that could bring traffic back to the client. So it's a little cumbersome perhaps to look at this screen, so that's why you've got an export button. That's what I mentioned here, organizing your backlinks. Download your links and compile them in a spreadsheet. Review them periodically, add notes, and highlight colors. So you can't do too much on the screen here, but if you select to export, um, it, I'll, I'll just go ahead and open it, and it'll open in Excel. It's a, it's a basic spreadsheet file. So I can open it in whatever spreadsheet. If you've, got, if you've got numbers on the Mac, it opens in that, no problem. We've got Excel on these computers, so it'll open in, in this software. And the point of that is that, let's say once a month, I go in here and I check, have, are there any new backlinks? Are there any new you know, links back to the client, to my site. And the point of downloading it as an actual file that I can work with is that here I can do things like, you know, organize it like, okay, this link up here actually is not that relevant, so I'll, I'll delete that. But this one about the reader is very good, so I'll, I'll highlight it like that. This one that I saw over at uh, backist.tk actually is broken, so I'm going to mark that. So I can just 
do stuff with my data. What you do with it is up to you, but basically I've got a, uh, I've got a suggestion on the next little section, but you want to download this data, you want to check your, your um, results once a month and such, download it, make comments, and for example, I could make a comment, I could make a brand new column over here called comments, make a comment over here, um, let's say spam site, disavow. I'll explain that in a moment, but that's why you want to download this data to, to actually look at it and be able to do something about it. Something positive or something negative about it. Let's say the negative first. Let's say I found a few bad backlinks. I'm going to skip the part in my handout about the good part first. I'll go to the negative part. Bad backlinks. Uh, both Google and Bing provide the disavow links tool to minimize the impact of bad links. So this is some weird, some bad spam websites are linking to my site that could be dragging down my traffic. I want to disavow. I want to tell Google and Bing, don't take these sites into account when you rank me. Now be careful, you don't want to use this to, uh, to simply remove the links from your competitor, you know, that sort of thing. You don't want to abuse this technique. It could come back and bite you. You do want to use this technique when you know that these are spam sites that are irrelevant, that are you know, full of viruses or just content that is fake and just not relevant. You don't want to do that to relevant companies just because you don't like them. And so in Bing, I have that you're going to visit your dashboard just like we are here. Then you're going to click on Configure My Site. On the left, you've got Configure My Site. Well, I'm going to close this links. Configure My Site. And then very easily, we've got disavow links. All of these screens have a little info uh, info bubbles to get you a little bit more help. And you've got help on the top right corner. But the point of disavow here is to tell Bing, these are the bad pages. Don't take them into account. It's not going to remove links to your site. It can't do that. Only the owners of the site have that power. But what will happen here is that Bing and Google will not take these negative sites into account. And you've got three ways to do this. Page, directory, domain. I recommend only do the domain. Because what Page is saying is, let's say I'm saying badblogger.com slash blog slash spam HTML. Let's say there's one page on this site that I believe is a spam link pointing to my website. I could select page, and this is what Bing will look at and say, okay, we will no longer take that page into account. You've got the next level up, which is directory. Well, it's a bunch of pages in this directory, in this path, in this section of the site take all of those into account. All of those are bad. Don't link them to my site. I don't recommend page and directory because usually when you're dealing with a spam website, the whole thing is spam, not pieces of the site. So really, you want to set the domain, which is the whole website. The whole website is bad. I'm not going to go browsing their website trying to find every bad page. Waste of my time. Usually, the, the, the directory, the folder, is not enough too because they can easily make a bunch of different pages and folders and, again, a waste of my time to figure out all the bad links, even if I get a nice link, a nice report about it. Usually, 99% of the time, it's the whole domain, it's the whole website that is bad, run by spammers, full of viruses or fake content. I simply say this I simply say this domain is the bad one, add the text, click disavow, and then in some amount of time Bing will get to your request and then it will check the site and check it out and vouch for it and then remove you, remove the connection from its database. Not the actual connection from the internet, but it will stop paying attention to it. 
I can't say in how long it'll take, but this is a good thing to start off with because you want to do this eventually. You want to clean up your presence online because unfortunately it is guilt by association with the search engines. If a lot of bad websites are linking to you, then you're a bad website, unfortunately, in the eyes of the search engines. So if you take this step to disavow, that will help you be one of the good guys. We have a way to do that also in, in Google, but when we get to that eventually in, in a little bit, you're going to see that it's actually more complicated in Google for a good reason, because Google is the bigger search engine. But if you accidentally disavow a good source of traffic, suddenly you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and you're going to drop down in the rankings if you disavow legitimate websites on Google, because it's the bigger search engine. So we'll see with Google, but basically you have to upload a file that explains that you've tried to deal with the spammers. Uh, it is much more effort, but it is worth it and it, is, and it does work. We'll see that soon. Let's look at Bing a little bit more. We found where our backlinks are. We've talked about organizing them and then bad backlinks. Let's say we talk about what do you do with a good backlink? Let's see, with a good backlink, I'm going to see... Another client, I'm going to see those backlinks. So this particular one has a lot of links here. I'm just going to look at one of these, the Amazing Maguey Plant. So we've got these, survivingmexico.com, dnainfo.com, a lot from the same one. Here's a different page, whatscookingamerica.com, sandiegan.com. So I want some of these I might not know. Are they good? Are they bad? I do have to click to actually view. And I do have to vouch for the site. I have to go look at it, follow the link, see what people have written, see the good and the bad and all of that. So this is from San Diego. Live the San Diego Adventure. Okay, so let's say I found uh, a good website. Let's say this particular let's say this particular um, link from some other site is linking to this client. This seems to be a um, like a food website. Home bar, home bar basics. Okay, so it's related to alcohol and such. And there's um, a link here. Up until the 15th century, the native Arawak people in Barbados to themselves likely created the idea of spit roasted wood smoked meat, barbacoa, the granddaddy of southern US barbecue. So here there's a link from this food website. It's, it's about alcohol specifically. But then there is a link to one of the articles on this client, that Mexican food restaurant that I mentioned, about barbacoa, which is traditional slow-roasted lamb barbecue, there's a link there mentioning it. That's a good, that's a good link that this site with this traffic and such is linking back to the client. Here's how you would use it in a positive way. 
taking advantage of your backlinks. Now that you have a backlinks report, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to the links that link to your own site. For example, tweet about a positive restaurant review. On Facebook, post about a link to a blog post that positively reviewed your product. In the book, it's in a section called Backlinks to Backlinks. The more good content that is pointed to the sites that link to you, the more your SEO ranking could increase. This takes a lot of work, but could pay off. So what I'm saying here is, I found an article that is positive about the client. I'm going to go onto the client's Twitter or Facebook or whatever social media and share this. I'm sharing this positive piece on the client to our social media. I'm sharing it with our 700 followers on Twitter or our 3,000 likes on Facebook. I'm sharing it to more people. I'm giving traffic to that link there. I'm sending people to that link that we do not control, that we did not ask for, that we did not pay for. I'm sending traffic to them, basically, because that creates a feedback loop because there would be some people, some followers on our social media that see that article, they like it, and they share it. One of our followers, let's say I've only got 20 followers, but let's say one of the followers on our Twitter that follows us, and we share this piece, they might be really into, you know, amateur bar attending. And they like this piece, and they learn something, they share it. And that particular person had 700 followers. We had 20, and one of our followers shared it to their 720. We basically reached 720 people instead of just the 20 that we have directly. So that's what we want to do. That's why we want to do that. We want to share the links that have shared us. We want to bring more attention to those positive links because those positive links could bring more attention to the client back to us. That's the point here, and I like to call that hyping your links. You're going to find these links, you're going to share them. You can share them from your own, from the company profiles, fine. You can share them from your personal profiles, that's fine. You can share them anywhere. I'm just saying you need to share that. Get more attention to that link so that that link gets you more attention in turn. People sometimes ask, well, is that, is that, um, what's the term? Is that, um, the term uh, legitimate? No. Uh, is that scrupulous that I'm sharing, that Victor is sharing this link for a client? Is that scrupulous? Uh, you have to decide if it is or not. You have to decide what sort of company policy you have about people that work for you or with you are sharing for you. Um, with this client, it's fine. We have an agreement with the author that, I mean with the owner, that if I share something positive about the company, that's fine. I could mark that as an ad, as a, as a recommendation, as an affiliate link, whatever. I have to decide how I'm going to share that. Yes? Is, is it typical that um, someone who links to your website would contact you and ask permission, or would they just do it? They would just do it. Really, the thing about all of this is that it's so it, online is so easy, so transitory. Uh, it is about the sharing, a lot of it, and maybe I don't want my stuff shared. I do have to say, honestly, unfortunately, I do have to say, if you don't want your stuff shared online, don't put it online. I know that is blaming the victim, but this is just so easy to share. It's hard to get the genie back in the bottle, but we want to embrace that, really. Now, I do believe that you should make it as easy as possible for all your stuff to be shared online, your blog posts and your, and your pictures and all of that, if it really relates to your company. If it's personal stuff, that's a completely different thing. I do much value more the privacy of that. But to share other people's stuff, you're helping them. They may take it as a bad thing. It's very rare that I find that, that someone says, don't share that, please. Remove that, please. And I would. I would do it for a client. It is their property, it is their content, I would remove it. And really, it's much better to think in those terms about share this, it'll help you, it'll help me, and you shouldn't be bad.
had a question too. Is um, on some of my bad backlinks, mm -hmm. I went to the, their website and it says the account is suspended, that, that it has been suspended. So that backlink is still there, but the account has been suspended. Is that still going to be? I would still go through the process of disavow. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Even if right now it's suspended, they may come back. Who knows who suspended them? They may fix that and come back. With it being a suspended account, it's still a bad link. Yeah, it's still in the records of being in Google that there is some link from some weird site. So if, if you go in and, and go still disavow, I would still recommend it. So this is another thing, this is another endorsement for why you should take the social media class because hopefully you have stuff to share. You run out of ideas, you might get some stuff from the backlinks. There's been plenty of times that I see, oh, there's another link from some review site or some other relevant, legitimate place linking to my client. Great, I'll share that on social media. I'm giving them a good ego boost because their stuff gets shared. You know, if I share that on Twitter and I also tag that that reviewer on Twitter, that reviewer may have 10,000 followers and they that's, that feels good to get praise. So that reviewer may share that post that they made three months ago. Uh, I tweeted it and brought it back to the attention of people and that reviewer reshared it and now it went to 10,000 more people and more views would then see this and link back to the client. All right, so the um, the thing that we did was we we looked at Bing uh, to see our backlinks. Once we know that, we downloaded the report, talked about disavow links, and hyping good links. We would do the just about the same thing for Google, slightly different because different screens and such. We're going to do that right after our break. We'll take one more break. And then uh, we'll look at how we do this with Google. We're going to see it's very similar. So we'll be back in 10 minutes.